This is Vancouver. Located in beautiful British Columbia, it is an elegant city when it's sunny. Normally, it looks a lot more like this. Same beautiful buildings and scenery, just gray, cloudy, and wet. Now, I'm here a few miles outside the city of Vancouver, and the weather is pretty cloudy. It might even rain. If it does, I'll probably get a little bit wet, but I won't have to worry about the rain burning my skin or dissolving my phone. That's because thanks to a treaty signed nearly 32 years ago, I don't have to worry about acid rain. This is a brief history of why that is. In 1963, a group of scientists measured the pH levels of rain samples from a New Hampshire forest. And they found something astonishing. The rain there had a pH of 4 to 4.2, substantially lower than the normal pH of rain, around 5.6. From here, scientists began measuring the pH of rainfall all around the eastern United States and found similar results. The rain was a lot more acidic than usual. Scientists attributed the phenomenon, called acid rain, to emissions from power plants and industrial processes. Fossil fuels contain lots of impurities, namely nitrogen and sulfur. When these are burned, they combine with oxygen to form nitrogen and sulfur oxides. These gases end up in the atmosphere where they mix with rain to create acid rain. The chemistry behind acid rain involves compounds called acid anhydrides. Broadly speaking, acid anhydrides are non-metal oxides that form an acidic solution when mixed with water. Non-metal oxides are any compounds that are made up of oxygen and non-metallic elements. Acid anhydrides are usually discussed in the context of organic chemistry, though we can also lump sulfur and nitrogen dioxide into this group using that definition. When sulfur dioxide is mixed with water, it forms sulfurous acid, H2SO3. When nitrogen dioxide is mixed with water, it forms nitrous and nitric acids, HNO2 and HNO3. All of these acids form in rain droplets as they fall to earth, creating acid rain. Now, it's important we understand acid rain not just on a conceptual level, but in terms of magnitudes as well. Regular rain is already a bit acidic with a pH of about 5.6 on average. This is because another acid anhydride, carbon dioxide, mixes with it in the atmosphere. CO2 forms carbonic acid when mixed with water, the same process that makes soft drinks fizzy. However, carbonic acid is a pretty weak acid it has a Ka, or acid dissociation constant, of about 4.5 times 10 to the minus 7. That's why having a lot more of it in the air doesn't make the rain much more acidic. However, the acids that form thanks to the combination of sulfur and nitrogen oxides with water are much more acidic. Sulfurous acid has a Ka of about 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Nitrous acid is at 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4, and nitric acid is such a notoriously strong acid that it has a Ka far above 1. The larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. You can see from these numbers that these three acids are many orders of magnitude stronger than carbonic acid, which is why elevated SO2 and NO2 levels create acid rain, while elevated CO2 levels do not. However, the pH of acid rain isn't actually so low that it could rapidly dissolve your phone or burn your skin, as I said before. But for it to have a devastating environmental impact, it doesn't need to. Many parts of Canada contain vulnerable hard rock, like granite, that can slowly disintegrate with acid rain. And many Canadian lakes and rivers lack the natural alkalinity that can neutralize acid rain. 
In the 1970s, when acid rain was first being addressed as a serious issue, there was a lot of measures being proposed by environmentalists to limit its devastating effects. At the same time, there was plenty of opposition to these measures, just as there is opposition to measures against climate change today. Coal and petroleum lobbies had personal economic interest in preventing such measures from passing. There were a lot of people who would proudly declare that acid rain was not real. President Ronald Reagan once even said that acid rain was caused by ducks. But the environmentalist movement prevailed. After 27 years of fighting, in 1991, the Canada-US Air Quality Agreement was signed. It included an agreement to reduce sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide emissions. The environmental movement succeeded. Since then, atmospheric sulfur dioxide levels have decreased by nearly 89%, and nitrogen oxide concentrations have also dropped a solid 57%. Acid rain has become a thing of the past. So, as we go into 2023, it can be easy to think of all the ways the world still needs to improve. Global warming, gun violence, the war in Ukraine, or the current plight of women in Iran. All of these are big issues that need fixing. But I think it's also important that we look back on our past and appreciate the successes that put us where we are today. 2023 will be the 32nd anniversary of the Acid Rain Treaty. A treaty that saved Canada's forests and lakes from destruction. <sighs> At the end of the day, humans are fools. For every hundred years worth of failures, we're lucky to have maybe one year's worth of success, but that's usually enough. We can use those successes as examples to guide us towards a brighter future in 2023 and beyond. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. I've included all of my sources in the description below for your reference. Hope you enjoyed.